All right, so I want to preface this uh, video by saying that the best way to protect your plumbing and uh, especially your ram pump during cold weather, obviously, is to drain everything out so there's no water in there to freeze, expand, and burst pipes. Uh, but in the event that you can't do that because you want to be able to operate on the thaw, like I do, uh, flowing water through it is one way to protect it. That said, it has to be done correctly, uh, and even if you were to drain all your plumbing, it would come back to good plumbing skills, maintaining good even slopes so that everything drains out completely. Any low points or dips in the pipe can accumulate water and end up freezing and splitting anyway. Uh, so I just want to point out that that is actually the best way to protect it, but what I'm about to show you here is a compromised way of protecting it. Uh, through the use of flowing water that is not frozen and uh, I've also done some experiments with uh, with uh, a water sensor delivering water to the greenhouse and looking at what temperature it actually freezes out and stops flowing at and it looks like that sits right around 27 degrees I'll try and dig up the chart from uh, a year or two ago when I was studying this and you'll see where the temperature drops, 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 and then suddenly it flatlines, and that flat line is where it freezes solid and stops flowing. So interesting thing to note, water will actually flow and keep flowing below 32 degrees, provided there's enough uh, velocity or energy in movement in it. All right, so let's get on. February 13th, 2020. Supposed to drop down cold the next couple days with a low of 5 degrees Fahrenheit Saturday night. It is currently Thursday night. And so I'm uh, anti freezing the ram pump system. So I just thought I would detail that quick for those of you who uh, want to be able to pump water through the winter and not just completely shut your system off. When it gets real cold, you have to. You have to shut it down. But there's a way to do that so you can keep flowing water in it so when you get a thaw, you don't have frozen cracked pipes everywhere. The way to do that is keep some volume of water flowing through the whole system all the time. And so I cracked this valve partially. You can see we're not running full volume here. I'll just show you quick, full open. We're not doing that here. We're just we're letting some water run through to keep it from freezing. And the rest of the water is flowing, so it's flowing in from the supply line up to the standpipe. It's flowing out this valve, and it's flowing out the drive pipe to the ram pump all at once. And we'll go look at the ram pump and how that's configured. So here we are at the ram pump. I'll just show you quick. I'm dumping the reservoir, the upper reservoir from the barn. So you see the output valve is open, so we're dumping that. And I got the bypass valve open. That's wide open, both of those. So we're flowing water through that continuously. Once the upper reservoir dumps, water will continue to flow uh, in from the drive pipe and through this. That also gives us water flow in the pressure chamber because as it comes through, it's gonna swirl through there. So we're getting flow through everything so that none of these pipes freeze. The only pipe that will have some frozen water in it is the black poly pipe and that seems to tolerate freezing okay for the most part. And then over here the valve is set up. I just take another weight here because normally this will just close and your water will only come out there. That's not bad for weather that isn't super cold but when the weather gets super cold you want flow through absolutely everything especially if this valve is brass like mine or even worse if it's stainless that is not a cheap valve to replace so you don't want that freezing and breaking so what I do is I just take a little weight and I pin it open and because we don't have any pressure in the chamber it doesn't try to keep kicking on and off so it just flows like that now you can see that everything has got flowing water that's above freezing over pretty much the entire pump and then I take the bucket and I kind of direct it so it it hits as much of the pump as possible. So everything's got water flowing through it to keep it from freezing so we don't crack pipes. That seems to be a reliable way 
to keep things from freezing, at least down to, I think we've been down to negative 5 or even maybe negative 10 or 12 degrees Fahrenheit without freezing uh, using this method. So just a little tip on how to end freeze your thing I want to add to this video uh, is that this effect of flowing water can also be used in the form of overhead irrigation to protect plants from frost in the fall and in the spring. Uh, there are some subtle nuances that are required for this and I suppose I'll just go over them briefly and, uh, and then I will let you see this little video clip that I have from 2009 when I was using irrigation to protect some crops in the springtime. Um, so uh, using irrigation, you're using overhead irrigation, you're spraying all of the plant surface that you can spray with the irrigation. Uh, and this warmer water helps protect the plant, but you can even experience uh, icing and freezing on the plants without plant damage. And what basically happens is the water takes the cold shock and freezes, and the plant, because it has a higher uh, amount of sugar content in the sap, doesn't freeze at the same temperature the water does. And the trick to making this effective is not just irrigating until you have ice on the plants, but irrigating through ice on the plants and on through to sunrise and on until frost lets off on the surrounding plants around it. And once the frost comes off when the sun comes up, then you can stop irrigating and you've protected your plants through the night. Uh, anything short of that, typically you'll experience frost damage anyway. Um, so, just thought I would share this tip as well since we're on the topic of uh, antifreeze related to farming, homesteading, pumps, water, plants, etc. If you want to know more about this, I can certainly talk more about it. I'd love to hear of any questions or comments you have down below. And uh, as always, thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network. Hope you'll like and subscribe. And hope to see you in future videos.